Hi, I'm Bonnie Bischoff. And I'm J.M. Sarone. And today we're going to give you a window into our studio and our design and collaboration process. Here we're taking you on a little stroll in our upstairs polymer clay studio with our dress forms, our big clay machine, and our jewelry boards showing some variety of our work. It's a relatively small space, the polymer studio, but we have big work tables that are glass covered to do all kinds of projects. Drawing is an essential piece of what we do and how I start many projects and I get inspired by keeping those drawings up on the wall. My scrap clay abounds in a rainbow and it's useful for many projects. And my flat files are my treasure trove starting with the big clay drawer on the bottom and there it's the polymer in its raw form. The next drawer up has all the mixed and conditioned colors in groups and stored with wax paper. And in the final drawer are veneers, which are made from canes of designs that are sliced and rolled all to the same thickness, stored in between sheets of wax paper. So our work is mixed media work. We use polymer clay primarily for our surface design, but we also use metals. And um, this is after working with polymer for quite a long time, realizing it needs armature and some level of strength to help it hold together and to be worn or used in the furniture and lighting, all of these things. It really is a medium that's amazing, but it needs a little bit of help. So. I'm going to just show you some different pieces of jewelry we have here that approach polymer, the use of polymer and metal in a variety of ways between the two of us. So you can see these pieces um, are really all about the veneer on the front. You don't really see any metal on the back. And in fact, they were a really fun exploration of optical illusions um, created by the surface design. So I primarily use stripes and color blends as a design to um, show my ideas, show shading, show directions. So here you can see in these, the lines are showing direction. The shading is showing you what appears to be going down into the form. But of course, it's a trick of the eye. And there's pearlescence. So you can see the pearlescence in this one really creates this, this sense of, of light glowing off of a surface. And same with this one. So in this case, what happened is I was fascinated by these shapes. I did these drawings. There's a variety in this set. And after I did the drawings, I went right to constructing the veneers. And then um, I did these schematics to figure out what there's a metal plate inside each one of them that has the catches are coming out of the metal plate. So I figured out how big that would be and how it would interact in each case. And after creating this, we make lots of photocopies of our drawings to work with in the, both studios. I draw a side view. We usually have a conversation between myself and JM and figure out, you know, just how we're going to approach this within both of our comfort zones. So in this case, I'm doing the polymer clay work. He's doing the metal work. And um, so that is how we approached these first round of pins. This piece is kind of interesting. It's a different approach. What we did for this series is this is a pendant and this is all nickel silver wire that has been soldered together into a framework and then covered with very thin strips of polymer clay on all surfaces. So in this case, I actually approached using the metal like drawing and I made forms, soldered the bottom shape, then soldered the top shape, then soldered this shape. So it was an additive process for me. And then the color came second uh, after all of the metalworking. And uh, of course, both of us do metalworking, but it depends on the project, 
who's going to delve into it and what we feel comfortable with our skill set and who has the kernel of idea that they want to express most exactly. Now, in this case, it was interesting because JM also made some and he drew his out and put the frameworks together dry without um, soldering and uh, came from a different construction point of view that he saw how the entire piece would be assembled before he actually um, did the soldering. And then I went on and covered those pieces with the polymer. But um, I tend to be additive. He tends to be more uh, calculating and fitting pieces, which harkens back to our furniture making days. And of course, with furniture making, that is exactly what you have to do. You have a great deal of planning involved. So that's another approach with wire and polymer clay and two different people and two different skill sets. Bracelets are probably some of the biggest challenges design-wise, and we have both tried quite a variety of ideas. So in our exploration of bracelets, um, this is an idea that JM started with a drawing that was a flat drawing. Sorry about the glare on this. And in this, you can see he's indicating where the textured metal and then the polymer will be. So you draw something flat like this. We know what the circumference basically wants to be, but then you have to think about how it works around the wrist. So this, these are two of the same uh, style, but somewhat different treatments with the metal and the polymer clay. And what's going on with these bracelets is uh, we actually build these around a wooden form and there is a wire armature that lies underneath all of this and then a layer of a two-part um, clay that will dry over about a 24-hour time and that clay it's a epoxy clay can be sculpted and filed and it adheres to the wire armature unbelievably well and then this actually these pieces were cut textured and soldered to that wire before we added this this body of epoxy clay and the very last thing um we did in this case, so JM did all of that prior, all the sculpting, all the metal work, passed it to me, and then I added the very thin layer. You can even see here kind of how thin it could be. It's very, very thin layer of polymer clay. It's just my veneers on the outside, and I've added texture by pressing into the polymer. I've added texture on top. I've rubbed paint into the, the textured areas, and also Sometimes, in this case, actually, we uh, I chose to add color into the texturing on the metal, and this is oxidized bronze, and this is sterling silver that's been oxidized and then waxed. Uh, so we have a big range of language and um, a way that the metal and the polymer clay sort of talk together. So uh, this is a, a, a different approach for bracelets than we had done prior. This bracelet is another interesting example of how we collaborate. Um, in this case, JM did this drawing. He had an idea about forms he thought would be interesting to wear on a bracelet and how they would work around the wrist. And we have been playing most recently with linked bracelet forms. Uh, this was created for a men's wear show. So we were trying to come up with some ideas that we thought were a little less bulky and a little more wearable by men. And so he drew out these shapes and thought about what part of the metal would be textured, what would be polymer clay. And actually what happens with this, which is interesting, the metal steps back in here and this veneer is applied last and sandwiches around this whole formed metal piece that has soldered uh, links and texture and oxidation and then it has these other links on the back that are soldered onto the metal pieces and then we have the catch in the back so so that you have like a loop and a hook essentially holding each piece so you get some pliability it's not too hard to get on and off it's, and it's still very very light this is a very thin metal and it's the polymer is simply sandwiched around it so uh, he did the initial drawing I uh, did all the metal work and oxidation, and then I came in and added these, un sort of unusual for us, it's a Mokamagane style, or it almost looks like Damascus steel, where you have layers that you 
pierce and press and slice at a low angle and then you get these really interesting forms. So that is a second type of bracelet. Another type of collaborative piece that we are now doing is related to the furniture work we did for many, many years where we have veneers of polymer on a wooden substrate. So in this case, I'm going to show you one of our wall pieces that is a nut hatch. And um, so this started out with all my favorite birds of here in Maine, and I collected pictures and drew them to scale. And as accurately as I could, they're very realistic, but of course I know that by the time it goes from here to here and then to the actual piece, there's going to be a lot of interpretation of texture and color. So you can see I have my own language for developing some of these textures and I'm adding the birch bark texture, which is something I love doing. And um, so I know that as I move along, these effects shift and it becomes my own language for this, an expression for this particular bird and they're life size. So how this goes is I have the drawing and uh, I will build a veneer, and all these little pieces in here that work out the feathers. And you can see in the actual bird, I'll bring it up closer, there is, there's a fair amount of texture in this. And so it's not as smooth of, as a lot of things that we have done. So I will build this whole surface veneer and it's very, very thin. Um, and then you can see here, if you look really carefully, what we do is we glue it down like a veneer to quarter inch plywood. And on the back of the piece, you can see, this is just plywood, uh, maple plywood, it's finished and sealed and and here you can see that line and what we do then so i i'm doing the polymer clay on here and a lot like our furniture um, i pass it on to jm and then he will glue this down to the the plywood with uh, our veneer press which we had used to make the furniture and then so it's really securely glued it's cut out and he has to cut out all these crazy edges that i have um, figured out with the polymer clay and I really love that these have a live natural line to them and it's not like a square painting or a panel on a piece of furniture and then after that's glued and cut and filed then actually what we go back and do is paint the edge and both of us work on this is paint the edges with acrylic paint so that it appears to have depth and uh, the acrylic paints look very much like the polymer clay so you, you really feel like there is some depth to this, although it's really uh, very, 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 very low relief. If anything, it's just somewhat textured. And then in this case, I soldered up uh, branches out of nickel silver and covered them completely in polymer clay and then drilled into the plywood and fit them in and they're epoxied in there. So they're, they're very sturdy, but they have the flexibility of the wire and that works really well. And then on the back of the piece, it has a magnet um, that is quite strong and um, matches a magnet that we can attach it to the wall with. So there's yet another mix of media and skill sets for uh, another type of work that we've been doing. This is about sort of the drawing process for a lot of our work. We'll start with one of us doing a drawing. In this case, I got the idea of making moth pins. I've always been fascinated by the designs that you find on moth wings and the palette of, the color palette of their, their wings and patterns. So what I usually start with is a lot of photo research and good old Pinterest helps me out with that. But there is such a wealth of imagery out there to start just to, to get my mind thinking about designs and patterns and palettes. And what I'll do after looking at these photos is I will just start sketching. And I see sketching is like a meditation that helps me focus in, really understand what the lines are doing and what the patterns are saying. I mean, you look at something like this, it's very complex, but when you have to draw it and break it down, you really start to understand what the shape relationships are. And, um, 
that is a real learning process for me and something I've always done since I was very young. I love to draw and I'm in love with line. I'm in love with the form and pattern of natural objects and how those speak to form and function and the beauty of that. And um, of course, I'm always looking at the color patterns too. So after I have a drawing like this, then the next thing we have to figure out is how does that come together to be an actual pin? So then I'll usually do some tracing and I'll fig I'm will i figuring out in this case, what's metal, what's polymer, what's textured. This is a language we've developed between the two of us. And um, so I come up with this much more simplified schematic. And then that is a way that the two of us can communicate. We make lots of photocopies and we're working with these to figure out where the metal will go. And in this case, so here's a, here's a great example right here. Here's this pin. Um, the original drawing was right there. Here's the pin. I even have it labeled B and B. And then here is the actual pin. And what's happening in these pins is that the metal body also is is soldered down to a back that will hold the pin back and it will also extend out into the body of the pin and then the polymer clay is sandwiched you see how thin it is is sandwiched around the the body and then this pin back and these two pieces are soldered together so what we're doing in this case is i'm drawing coming up with these shapes I build these wings, fire the front wings, and then JM is building the metal pieces, texturing, soldering, putting the whole thing together. It's oxidized. And then I come back and sandwich these two together and fire it again. And then the last thing we do is add um, acrylic paint in here in the textures. And we will show you this whole process in greater detail now. So I'm going to show you how I construct veneer that goes on the front layer of most of our work. Um, I am rolling layers of polymer clay. Here's a really simple jelly roll. I roll up, squeeze them, stack them, all kinds of methods for constructing design. Here's a stacked layer. And what I actually have is a slice or cross section of design. I'll just show you a quick with this. The polymer clay, when you slice into it, you can see the design goes all the way through. And what I do is I take slices, and I, you can see I mostly work with stripes and with um, color blends. So I can take a slice of that striped sandwich and stretch it out. All my pieces of design are the same thickness, and that is why I call it marquetry, because I'm piecing together all kinds of little pieces that I cut out. I'm burnishing them with wax paper on top of it, like so, and it makes the seams come together. So I'm going to start with this section. I'm going to take, here's a color blend going from gold to purple, and that's how I'm getting these little glowing pieces in here. But what I'm going to do is cut a little wedge out of it. And the polymer clay, once it's all stretched out and in between wax paper, it will start to cool down and it's almost leathery. So you can see I can work with it pretty nicely. I actually use the blade to pick it up a lot of times. And my drawing, my schematic for where the metal is going to, how the metal is sized and where the metal begins, the drawing is taped down to glass that I'm working on underneath this wax paper. So I'm working on a wax paper surface and that really helps me um, work around the design. So in my mind, this is like the world's best coloring book once I do all my research and get my drawings and have the concept that I'm working on. Okay, now we're speeding it up so you can see how a piece grows as the veneer pieces are cut and trimmed together, burnished down, and the design builds.
Here we are in our small metal studio taking a look around at the forming area, the soldering area, and the polishing area. My grandfather's machinist chest, and here a wall full of pictures for inspiration and family and artwork. And there's the moth pins. Their schematics now showing the bottom plate that will hold the pin catch. So first, we texture sterling silver. JM's now tracing the upper body piece, which will be textured and then formed into a dome shape. It's cut out. And then he's going to stamp it. And then it will be polished and domed and then soldered to that bottom plate. And then here's our finished pin. Thank you for joining us on an adventure in our studios.